Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Renaga. Welcome. I've been invited today to conduct this creative workshop for you, and I think I've come up with a really fun idea. What we're going to do is we're going to combine together more than one animal to create a brand new made up creature that never before existed. All right, so now I am penciling in my composition, as you can see, and I'm looking at my photographic references as I figure out what I want my animal to look like. I'm incorporating some of the visual characteristics of the butterfly that I'm looking at, including some perspective a little bit. So I gave him the butterfly's antenna I gave him the butterfly's wings. I gave him the bird's tail. And I kind of over-exaggerated those fuzzy large ears a little bit. Throw some more veins in there. And so anyway, this is what it looks like. This is the concept sketch, okay? And you know, you can have as much fun with it as you desire. I have something over here called palette paper. It's basically wax paper. I also have a cup of water right here. And I have some brushes, okay, a variety of brushes. And of course, a piece of paper towel standing by just in case I make a big old mess. You can always blot something away if you're quick about it. So check this out. Here are my markers. I'm using, now uh, my son, and you guys might have those, um, you know, uh, washable markers that are kid friendly. Um, I'm using instead something called the Tombow set of markers. And the Tombow markers are water soluble, okay? And so here we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by squiggling some color down on the palette paper, and then I'm gonna apply it with a brush. Now, I have the first thing you want to do is you want to decide, well, what colors do you want in your picture, right? You might want to start with the background first. Do some background stuff, let it dry, and then do the animal. So, for example, I can take this beautiful blue color, and I can throw some of this down on my palette paper or wax paper. Now, you don't have to do it this way. You could even start to draw directly into your watercolor paper and add water to that. This is just how I prefer to do it. So here we go. I have a nice round brush and I'm getting it nice and wet and I'm adding water. Look at that. Do you see that? It literally acts like watercolor. I love the Tombow markers. Now what I'm going to do is start applying it to the background around my mythical creature. The more water you use, the better in terms of carrying the pigment across the paper. There we go. And you know, when I'm doing this, I try not to be too precise or too careful or too perfect. I like to kind of let things happen. That's kind of the point of watercolor. That's an expressive medium. And you know, it looks beautiful when it's kind of translucent and see-through a little bit. Yeah, so as you can see, I'm adding some color around the animal in the background. And just kind of, you know, having some fun with that. There it goes. Boom. Love it. I love this blue color. It's so pretty. And you can also mix colors together on your palette, different color markers, etc. So there it is. That looks really nice. Now it does take a few moments for everything to dry, so just be patient. And I tell you what, while that's drying, let me go ahead and open another one. I can add just plain old water to my fox, my eagle fox, just like this. 
just add some clear water right on top of the pen work. Remember, that's why we chose the micron pen and the ballpoint pen, because it doesn't carry at all when you get the paper wet. See? So I'm just getting it nice and wet. Now, I'm going to come over here and grab some pigment from my palette paper and start to drop it in where the shadows exist. All right? Try to avoid those areas where the, you might want the white of the paper to come through a little bit. Just like so. Yeah. Just like so. And, you know, again, I like to work in layers. So I typically tend to add color just a little bit at a time. And then I just let it dry. And then I go back into it with more color. Just like that. And by getting the paper wet first, it allows the pigment to kind of travel and carry a little bit, maybe even in somewhat unpredictable ways, which can be very nice, you know? Yeah. Now let me show you something else. Watch this. You can even take the markers, for example, and you can draw directly onto the watercolor paper and I think what I'll do is add a little bit to the nose here. And I'm going to add a little bit to the inside of the ears. Like so. And I'm not worried about it looking too perfect because I'm going to add water to it. And it's going to change the way that it looks a little bit. See? Like that. And like that. And I might add a little bit down here as well, underneath the chin. And so I'll hold that closer so you can see what that's looking like, right? And now I'll just add a little bit of water to that. And this will make it look a little bit more like watercolor. Kind of blends it a little bit too, which is nice. And remember, you can always blot your paper if you feel like it's getting away from you a little bit. Just like that. Look how beautiful that's looking. Typically speaking, I like there to be more color in the shadows and less color in the highlights. And in this way, we can start to produce a beautiful drawing with lots of color. As you can see in our original cat drawing, the background is now dry. In the time it took me to apply color to this drawing, the background dried in this drawing. So if you have more than one drawing prepared, you can work back and forth and back and forth until you've actually completed two or more drawings, which is a great idea. Have fun with this and take your time. There's no rush. Put as many layers and as much imagination and thought into what you're doing as you desire. After all, it's your drawing. And at the end of the day, it's all about whether or not you love it. And I hope you'll love your work. Thank you for being with me here today, everyone. You have a fabulous day. Bye-bye.